and welcome to episode 102 of the Graceful Tingle podcast. I'm Amy Kate. Thank you so much for joining me today. As always, I'm really excited to be back with you guys this week for another podcast episode. I have so many things to share with you guys, um, especially finished objects. I have four, I think, finished objects this week, which is very unlike me. I try to always have something finished weekly. Um, sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge depending on what my current projects are, but This week was a really good week of making, and just a pretty good week in general, and I am so grateful for that. Um, But, yes, episode 102, here we are. I think I mentioned it last week, but I think it's going to take a few episodes to really get used to being in, like, triple digits. There's something strangely exciting about it, I'm not going to lie. Today is Sunday, April 24th. It is a beautiful, beautiful day. It is like cloudy, a little bit overcast, but still sunny, so warm. It is such a gorgeous day. I'm so grateful for this warm weather. Um, I'm sure that will possibly change in the coming months because it's just going to get hotter and hotter now. Um, But I am pretty eager for warm days outside. It's been fun so far. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into it this week. Like I said, I have quite a few finished objects to share, so let's talk about them. Okay, my first finished object um, is the slipper socks, or all the slipper socks. I guess there are technically two of them. Um, So I have been working on these for a couple weeks now. These are actually my first Christmas gift knit of, or for this year, for Christmas time 2022, which is very exciting to have something already done. I'm kind of brainstorming, kind of behind the scenes, um, gifts that I would love to get, or handmade gifts that I would love to give this year. I don't know. I kind of like still don't know what route I want to go. Um, socks are so much fun to make and you kind of can't have too many of them and I haven't been knitting socks for that long so the people in my family don't have that many pairs yet. So I might just keep knitting socks. I'm not sure but um, I made this pair of slipper socks and they turned out so cute. So this is a pattern that's available in my shops or free on my blog. Um, it's just really, really simple. If you're looking to get into sock knitting, I highly recommend making these because they use worsted weight or heavy worsted weight yarn. They're so quick to knit. Um, it's really difficult to like mess up the sizing or anything like that. And then um, I also have a full step-by-step video tutorial here on the channel. So um, yeah, take advantage of that resource for sure. But I I love how these turned out. I think they look so cute. I used Knit Picks Muse for these. I'm not sure what colorway this is um, at all, actually, but I love all of the colorways of Muse, so one of these days I will definitely be using all of them. I've used quite a few, but not quite all of them yet. Um, okay, so the I made the second size listed in the pattern for this pair, and these are designed to fit a, I think an 8.5 to a 9 women's shoe. These are not for me. Um, and I used all of one 100 gram, gram skein of yarn. So if you are curious, um, you can make this size and use one skein of this yarn. I did the uh, ribbing for the cuff and then 10 rounds, and that is the length of the leg. So the rest of that, which that is like heelish, and so all of this, this is like super technical, I know, <laughs> but all of this is for the foot. So short leg. And then the foot, of course, Um, if you're trying to stay within one skin of yarn, that's how you can do it. You really can't make any larger than that um, or larger than this with one skin of yarn. You would have to go to another skin and use like 50 or so grams of that, um, which is listed in the pattern, of course. But the socks that I make for myself, my feet are much smaller, and so um, I don't use up a full skein. So I just kind of thought I would put that in here in case you're interested on how much you can get for one skin of yarn. Um... But yeah, they turned out really cute. I'm excited about them. I think the recipient is going to love them, which is exciting as well. Um, Yeah, so FO number one. Okay, the second thing that I finished um, is a brand new pattern. So this just released yesterday. Currently for me, it's going to release tomorrow, but this podcast will go live on Tuesday. So Monday, this pattern released, and this is the, let me show you the right side, knobbly dishcloth. Um, so if you remember a while back, I designed the knobbly socks, um, which was featured on, um, needlesinlife.com, which is a blog by 
Callie. Um, of Made Rules and Left. You can follow her on Instagram and her blog. She's such such a fun person to follow, so I highly recommend it. But um, that pattern was featured along with an ice cream recipe on her blog. And so I have that, like that post is still on the blog. It will be forever. But then I also have um, the pattern available in my shops. So this is kind of in second version um, or second edition, I guess, to that pa to that collection, the Knobbly collection. I do hope to continue growing it. Um, and it's a really simple dishcloth. So it just uses that same pattern. It's so, so simple. Um, yeah, I just love how it turned out. I think it's so cute. Um, really simple, beginner friendly. You can find it in my shop, say my blog. And yeah, I think it turned out so good. Um, I use Knit Picks Dishy for this and I actually use one of the brand new colorways and it was so much fun to use. I love this color. It's like a kind of muted sagey green and I think it's so beautiful um and it's called inlay I think yeah inlay I think I'm saying that right it's spelled i-n-l-e-t um but I'm pretty sure it's pronounced inlay anyways turned out so cute I'm excited to make some more um dishcloths just like it using the same pattern with the other colors as well I think it's gonna make a really really beautiful set um so yeah definitely check that pattern out if you haven't already Okay, my next FO. So this one is technically not quite done. I do have to do the border on it, which I have not quite gotten around to doing. Um, I'll explain why in a second. But uh, um, after I add that, it'll be completely done. So I thought I would just go ahead and share it with you guys, especially since this pattern is releasing on Thursday, and I'm so excited about it. Um, so this is my second sample of the Overcast Cody. This is a really easy crochet cardigan pattern and has a really fun kind of lace um, or just, I don't know what to call this, like mesh lace, I'm not sure, but it's a really pretty open work crochet stitch pattern. So simple to do and it goes really, really fast because of the stitch, which is always so fun to me. Um, it uses wool to it yarn. In the first sample that I made, I used a 100% acrylic yarn. With this sample, I used Knit Picks Comfy, which is a um, cotton and acrylic blend. And I thought it would just be perfect for summer, and it totally is going to be. Um, yeah, it's going to be amazing. I am so excited to start wearing this. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I also really love this color. I use like a tan, kind of neutral color. I thought it would just match like everything. I thought it would look cute with jean shorts and a t-shirt. Um, you know, just in the summer months, so in the evenings... I thought it would be really nice so it's almost completely done like I said I just have to add the border around the entire thing which is just three rounds of single crochet like you're not really gonna be able to tell the difference um, so I was actually all set to finish this cardigan yesterday I had to work yesterday so I like got up early and started seaming it um, didn't quite get done in time I had to leave and then I came back and I like got to work on a whole bunch of other stuff I you know cleaned my room like that sort of not fun stuff. Um, and I somehow misplaced the ball of yarn that I was using to seam this cardigan. And then I was going to use it to do the hem. I completely misplaced it. And I spent an embarrassingly long amount of time looking for it yesterday. Um, and then today I looked for it again and I finally found it. So I'm so glad that I found it. Um, all of that to say, I was planning on finishing it yesterday. And because I couldn't find the yarn and I, and I didn't have another scan of it, um, I ended up having to, to delay it and then I haven't had time to sit down and crochet that border yet today. So that will happen later this afternoon. It's so close to being done. I love it. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this pattern is releasing on Thursday. So stay tuned for that. Um, it'll go live on all of my shops and the blog on that day. I'll post about it on Instagram and Facebook, of course. And then um, there's also going to be a tutorial launching here on the channel. Um, just like super quick and brief on how to seam this cardigan and other cardigans that are um, like this same construction, which is made, uh, this this specific cardigan is made of five pieces, the two sleeves, two front panels, and then the back panel. And it's all seamed together. Um, so it's like a really short, it's not like I don't even talk in it. Um, it's just a really basic tutorial. So if you are excited about that, if you're excited about that, maybe you're excited about the video i don't know i'm excited for the release though and i hope that you guys are too this pattern has been a long time coming but my testers are amazing and everything is set for it to go live which is incredibly exciting i love release days 
so so much it's extremely rewarding to just kind of have you know all that hard work and time that you put into this pattern um just kind of i don't know be let out i guess into the world on a good day it's so fun okay my last um finished object is this pillow so this is called the hazelwood lattice pillow this is a project that i made um kind of in collaboration slash for an event on instagram that i did with tony of tl yarn crafts so you may or may not know but she recently published this amazing book um it is the tunisian crochet handbook a beginner's guide by tony lipsy of tl yarn crafts if you don't follow tennis Tennessee. What? I think I was trying to combine Tony and Lipsy. Anyway, if you don't follow Tony, first of all, I'm sure you do because she's absolutely amazing. But if you don't, I highly, highly encourage you to do so. Um, she has an amazing Instagram account, but then also she's here on YouTube. Um, she actually recently hit 400,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is like mind-boggling amazing. That's extremely awesome she is so so good at what she does and is an inspiration to so many makers myself included um so she reached out to me a few weeks ago and asked if i would like to participate in the um tunisian crochet handbook tour which is hosted over on instagram basically a different maker is hosting uh sharing this book and a project that they made from it um every day throughout this month and it has been so fun, so exciting to see everybody else's projects. And then, of course, it was so fun for me to participate in it um, yesterday. So Saturday, the 23rd, was my day. Um, and so I shared this pillow that I made and then talked about the book a little bit. And it was just so amazing. It's This community um, continues to blow me away. And it, you know, I've talked about it before, um, and I'll mention it again, I'm sure. Social media can definitely be a difficult place to be. Um, it's not always good or bright or happy at all. No place in the world is. Um, but so much good can come up, come from it too. And that is 100% what I choose to focus on. And this um, tour, this book, Tony herself is just such a beautiful example of that. And that is the example that I hope to be as well. So all of that said, it was so fun to collaborate with her a little bit for that project. Um, but then also it was amazing to actually make this pillow. So like I said, this is the Hazelwood Lattice Pillow. It is a pattern that's included in the book along with so many other amazing patterns that I cannot wait to make. Um, but yeah, this is my finished pillow. It turned out so good. So this uses the Tunisian Simple Stitch primarily. So it is so good for beginners. Um, you make these little strips. So like this gray each of these gray strips is one strip and then you make the same amount of pink or whatever contrast color strips and then you weave them together and sew them to the back here which is just a solid piece of um tunisian civil stitch that's like the same width as the strips and then you put a pillow inside of it a pillow form inside of it and this is what you're left with it's so fun it's so amazing it was really simple um seeming and like construction constructing it is a little bit tricky i'll be honest and say that um it's just kind of difficult to get everything like even and laying how it's supposed to be and it is not perfect um but i really really like how it turned out and i'm excited to use it um i haven't put it on my bed yet because i've been saving it for the podcast obviously but um i am very excited to do that later on it's gonna be a really cute addition I used um, Nipix or Ricochet at Brava Tweed for the first time for this project, and I am 100% obsessed. I love Tweed yarns, and Brava is my all-time favorite acrylic yarn, um, at least so far. And the Brava Tweed is absolutely amazing. Like, I am just obsessed with all of these colors. Um, I am now itching to create a blanket with it, so let me know your thoughts about that. I'm kind of debating if I want to incorporate multiple colors or just make it one color I don't know I'm having such a hard time deciding that um but yeah this turned out so cute so beautiful I love it the pattern is completely flawless and amazing per usual um but yeah highly recommend that book I will link it it's linked in the show notes but I will also link it down below um if you are looking to get into Tunisian crochet I highly recommend it it has um like the first good chunk of the book is Tony's just showing you like everything about Tunisian crochet. She has some stitch tutorial or patterns. Um, 
I guess they all are tutorials, like stitch photo tutorials. And then like little techniques like seaming and finishing, blocking, um, like teaching color work. It's just amazing. So I highly recommend that you grab this book. Um, and like I said, it was an honor to be able to participate in the tour over on Instagram. Okay, so that is it for all of my FOs. Finally, it's quite a long finished object segment this week. Um, I actually do not have any works in progress that aren't designs currently. Um, I'm working on a couple of scrappy blankets, but I'm not going to share those this week because they have not grown a ton, just to be honest. Um, but I do have some really exciting designs to share, so let's go ahead and talk about those for a few minutes. <music> Okay, so the first design that I have been working on lately is something that I have shared for a couple weeks now, um, and it is the Tunisian Simple Stitch Cowl. So this is going to be called the Trusty Tunisian Cowl. Um, it kind of goes along with the Trusty Tunisian Tea that I released last year. Um, and I am so excited about this pattern. It is done. Um, it's going to be released early May, so stay tuned for that. I hope that you're excited about it. Um, I love making my version, and I'm excited to see all of you guys' versions as well. Um, as a little reminder, I used Wool of the Andes Tweed yarn for this by Nipix, um, and this is the colorway Apple Blossom Heather, and it is just the most perfect pink. I love the tweed so much. Um, so yeah, this would be a great, like, gift make if you are interested in that. It'd be a cute little accessory for yourself. Like, it's just really fun. It's a good beginner project as well for Tunisian crochet. So, that's going to be coming out soon. Stay tuned for that. Um, last week I was so close to finishing it. I was just seaming it together. Um, so, I finished that this week and now it is complete, which is super exciting. Okay, and then the next design that I have been working on is something brand new that you haven't seen yet. Um, and this is a rug. So I am designing this in collaboration with Hobie. Um, it has been so fun so far. I am very excited about this pattern. It's kind of um, outside of my typical design spectrum, I guess. I just really love designing all of the things I like you know, kind of running with whatever inspiration that I feel in that moment. Um, and so when I had the idea for this rug design, I decided to go for it and I love it so much already. So this is going to be a sun inspired rug. It is very yellow. So it's going to blow the camera a little bit. I apologize for that. Um, but that's pretty accurate. Like it is a very bright yellow. So right now I have finished the, um, actual, I don't even know what to call it because the entire thing is like a sun, so I'm not sure. I finished the first piece, first section. I guess that's what I should say. Um, so now I'm going to be creating points with a slightly darker yellow, um, kind of an orange actually. So I'm going to be using this color. They are different. They're a little more different than they're picking up on camera. You know, it might be very hard to photograph this design, <laughs> I'm realizing. That's going to be fun. Um, but so I'm going to be creating points inspired by the sun, um, or, you know, a, like, cartoonish sun, um, with this color, and then it's gonna be, like, a half sun shape for a rug. I think it's gonna be so cute, so fun, kind of, like, a really fun, like, summer addition to a house or a bedroom or whatever doorway you choose to put it in. Um, it could also go, like, on the edge of a bed, if your bed is on the floor. My, I currently have a loft bed, so that wouldn't be applicable to me, but it could go, like, on your desk as well. Well, in front of, this is a cute idea, in front of, like, your sink, um, in the kitchen, or bathroom, that would be such a cute idea. So, anyways, I'm really excited about this design. It's going great. Um, I'm going to stop holding it up because it's really blowing up the camera, and I apologize for that. Okay, the yarn that I'm using is very interesting. So, this is my first time ever using ribbon yarn. Um, this is simply called ribbon, 100% cotton, um, by... Hobie. And like I said, I'm using two different colors. So this is the main yellow color and this is number, hmm, uh, color number 37. So that's this yellow. And then this kind of darker yellow slash orange color is a color number 36. Um, so that's accurate right there. Everything else on the screen is dark, but those two colors are accurate. That's what they look like next to each other. Um, 
I think it's going to be such a fun project. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, like I said, it's my first time using ribbon yarn, and it has been very interesting. Um, the biggest thing that I have learned so far, and I'm going to include this in the pattern as well because I think it's a very important tip, um, is to use the outside end of the skein. So typically, I use the center pull inside inside center pull. I mean, I guess that's the best way to describe it. So don't pull part of a skein of yarn because it's just easier. Um, or, you know, I'll wind into a cake and use the center pull of the cake. Or the outside end of it, if it's a ball shape, like it just kind of depends on whatever is applicable. Um, but for this yarn, if you use the center pull, it gets so twisted. Um, the yarn gets so twisted. And because it's like a ribbon style, um, it's like flat. And so you can just kind of tell the difference in your stitches if you if it's all twisted. It's going to be a little bit twisted. Like that's just part of the yarn. Um, but if you use the outside end, it's a lot easier to work with because you're not um, twisting it as much every time you pull out the yarn. So a little tip there. Like I said, I will be including that in the pattern because I think it's a very important note when using that yarn. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's been pretty smooth sailing. I will say that I'm also using a larger hook, so it's kind of hard on your hands. Um, if that's something that you are sensitive to, if you're, um, if you have pain in your hands sometimes when you're making, or if you have, like, arthritis or something like that, um, I might not recommend this yarn or this project because it is a little bit hard on your hands. Um, I made the majority of that in one, like, evening. And just to be honest, I felt it, like, in my arm the next day a little bit. Um, just from kind of moving that big hook with the jumbo yarn, um, for a solid, you know, hour or something. So, and just thought, you know, just note that, I guess. Um, but you could also use, like, a different style of yarn and make the same pattern. It'll be easy to manipulate the stitch count, too. So, anyways, thought I would mention all of that just to be clear up front, I guess. Um, but yeah, okay, one more design. I almost forgot to talk about it, but this one is so exciting. I'm having so much fun with this project. Um, so I am designing a brand new blanket pattern with all of these Brava minis. So I have the rainbow pack. Um, there's just a whole bunch of colors in here. Like, I will link the yarn below. There's just a lot of colors. It's been so fun already. And then I'm holding them. Um, we're using them along with a skein of Brava 500 in Dev Heather, which is just a really basic, perfect gray. I love this gray. Um, and here is the blanket so far. So it's going to be striped with all of the different colors um, of these minis. And it's just going to be so bright and fun. Like, I am having so much fun with this project. It's been a blast so far. Um, it's also a very mindless crochet blanket, so it's perfect for the season that I am in right now. Um, just school and work-wise, it's really nice to have something mindless like this to work on um, in the evenings or during breaks or whatever. And yeah, it has been so, so fun. Um, that's about it. I mean, I, I've made a good bit of progress this week. Obviously, I'll make some more next week and I'll have more to share. Um... But yeah, it's just been a lot of fun to work on. So like I said, I'll link that yarn below because it, um, I highly recommend trying Brava Minis. Like, it is so much fun. Also, the comparison between a skein of Brava 500, which is 500 grams, and a mini is just hilarious. So that part of the project is also very fun. My dad saw this the other day. Um, I was working on it downstairs when we were watching a show, and it was absolutely hilarious like his reaction was so funny he apparently has not seen a ball of yarn that big before um but anyway it was very very funny okay so that is it for a design talk today and in general all of the knitting and crochet content so i do have a devotional and life update that i would love to share with you guys um so let's go ahead and talk about those things for a little bit So for devotional today, I wanted to talk about an experience that I had with a college class assignment um, a couple of weeks ago now, and um, I just kind of wanted to encourage you a little bit with it and kind of share just um, how much God has taught me over the past couple of years. So um, I actually just finished this class, so I'm not technically in it anymore, I guess. I don't know, but I'm very excited to be done with the class. Just to put that out there. Um, approaching the end of the semester, I'll talk about more that more about that in a minute. Um, 
It is all very, very exciting. The school break is in the very near future, and I am so, so ready. Um, anyway, so as kind of a random assignment, um, a couple of weeks ago, we were asked to answer the question, what is your five, what is your plan in five years? Where do you hope to be in life in five years? Um, and the question, like when I first read it, it was honestly really discouraging, um, because this class, just the instructor has been really challenging throughout the entire semester. Um, I love the class. I love the class's content. It is one of my favorite classes that I've ever taken. It is so much fun. It's business law, if you're curious. Um, and I am, or I did fully enjoy it. Um, but we are supposed to have these little discussions every week in like the forum. It's an online class. The situation is just kind of not ideal, just to be honest. But this was a random assignment that we had. Um, and like I said, when I read the question, it was discouraging because it didn't apply like to the class really. Um, and I knew like with past experiences with this instructor, she like her, her reason for answering or asking the question wasn't because, you know, she was like, really interested in our lives or in us um it was just a question you know and for me that's a question that i have put so much thought into personally and so to have it asked in such kind of like a blended way um was just a little bit disheartening i guess um but all of that is aside i have learned to give so much grace throughout this class um, so that's not me criticizing that person. That's just kind of saying how I felt when I was asked that question. Um, so anyway, I took the opportunity to answer the question honestly. Um, I kind of said, you know, like my dream plan for five years um, in the season of life that I am in right now, in like this exact moment in this day, um, that dream is pretty, I mean, it's not impossible. Um, but it is pretty unlikely. And so, um, but, you know, that wasn't the point of the question. The point of the question was just to answer it. So I did. And then after I answered it that way, I went into more detail. Um, and that's what I wanted to encourage each of you with today. So, um, specifically at the stage of life that I am in right now, I am 19. Um, actually I'll be 20 in a week, which is crazy, but I'm currently 19. Um, and you know, when you're 18 and 19, just a young adult in general or um, approaching young adulthood, you're often asked, you know, what are your plans? What do you hope to do with your life? What job do you hope to get? What college are you going to? What are you going to study? What are you going to do after college? You know, like all of these questions, um, rapid fire. And as soon as you answer one, like as soon as you know what college you're going to, then you ask, okay, well, are you going to continue your schooling? What are you going to, what job are you going to get after you graduate? Are you sure you're on the right path? Like, there's just so many questions. And honestly, that doesn't go away. I mean, that's the season of life that I'm in, but maybe you're in a season where you are asking yourself or other people are asking you the question, um, maybe what job do you hope to get after this one? Or when do you plan to retire? Or um, when are you going to have kids? Or when are you going to get married? Or et cetera. People are going to ask questions because people are curious. And I believe that, first of all, it's important for us to realize or to um, assume that their intentions are the best. You know, it's so good to think about these things and ponder what you do hope to do and accomplish with your life here on earth. Um, but the point that I have learned and the point that I want to make here is that we don't have to have all the answers and that's okay. We don't have to have a plan. We're called to trust in God's plan completely and as long as we're trusting in his plan, first of all, his plans and desires are going to line up with our own. And then also his plan and desires for our life are going to be revealed because we're trusting him and following him and saying yes, willingly to whatever he, um, whatever door he wants to open for us. Um, and so as like for me, um, I am a planner. I like to know what to expect. I like to know what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. And just to be honest, I have learned so much over the past couple of years of how to let go of that tra trait of my own. Um, I am in a job right now that it requires flexibility, um, and it has been so amazing. I'm so grateful for this season of life, and I have learned so much about, you know, how to be flexible and the beauties of that. And then, of course, through online school, I have learned so much through that as well. So I just want to encourage you that no matter what season of life that you're in right now, it is okay to not have all the answers and it is 
good to not have a specific plan laid out. Um, because when we don't, we are so much more in tune with what God wants us to do with our lives and what he has placed us on this earth to do. Um, and so I encourage you to just bask in that and to rest in it and to find such joy in trusting him completely. Um, and so a little side note, I do encourage you to keep working hard in the season of life that you are in and whatever you were called to do right now. Um, but it's really beautiful, again, to just completely trust him. So I hope that was um, encouraging for you today. It was definitely, I don't know, kind of a hard moment personally, I guess, to answer the question, but it led to such a good conversation. Um, I've like posted about it on my personal Facebook account with people that I um, like know, you know, in real, real life, through church and stuff like that. Um, so it was good to have conversations with people that I look up to um, in the comments of that post. And it was just, it was really, really good. So I hope that was encouraging for you as well. In terms of other life news, um, I did get a haircut last week. So I don't know if you noticed or not, but it is different and a shorter. I love it. My hair, I have a ton of it, so it is so good to have it short again. Um, it is just a lot less overwhelming when it's a little bit shorter, and I have a way to accept that. Um, what else? I am approaching the end of another semester. This is actually our last full week of school. Um, I have, like, one final lecture. I have a project to deliver, an essay to submit, um, and then I have one final early this next week so like it's open may 1st through 3rd hoping to probably take it on the first um not thought about that i wish it could have been open earlier but that's okay um anyway so this semester is wrapping up um it's my last spring semester i have two classes that i'm taking over the summer and that'll start in june um and then i will graduate in august and that's gonna be crazy and i'm really excited to see what god has in store post-college. i um, still trying to figure all of that out, but I 100% believe that it has, it's going to be so good, and I am really excited for it. Let's see what else. Um, I, I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago how I was studying a small group at my church, and a couple of people have asked about it, how that's going. So, firstly, thank you so much for caring. It means a lot, um, but it is going so good. Um, I'm so grateful for friendships and just this way to connect weekly um it's been so amazing and so rewarding i've already learned so much personally about just how to you know lead a little group like this um in god honoring ways and in ways that don't you know i'm not in authority but um to just lead it the best that i know how and it has been so good um so yeah it's been it's been amazing it's been a good week and i am hopeful for another good week um my birthday is coming up on my first, so it is my last week as a teenager, which is just absolutely crazy. It's not like anything big and monumental is going to happen, but um, it is kind of crazy to approach two decades old. It's kind of crazy. I definitely cannot believe it. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope that you are all having such an amazing week full of so much making, um, and I am really excited to come up next week to share with you all the things I have in store for episode 103. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and check out all of the links below. You can find links to my show notes, um, places where you can find me on social media, pattern shops, dishcloth dish cloth make along information. Um, like I said, that new novelty dishcloth pattern would be so perfect to make and then share in the Facebook group. So definitely check all of that out. Um, but I hope that you all have an amazing week full of so much making. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy making. Bye!